Have you ever followed an SQL tutorial, thought you understood it, but then completely froze when you tried to open the SQL editor and write the query yourself? That's because watching SQL isn't the same as practicing SQL. The real skill comes from writing queries against real data. In this video, I'll show you where to find realistic data sets, how to load them into your database, and how to get started with answering questions with SQL. And if you want a shortcut to practicing the right way, grab my SQL practice questions at the link in the description. It's full of real world problems you can solve step by step. The first step is finding realistic data. You don't need to wait until you're working in a job to find real data. There are plenty of free data sets available. My favorite place is a website called Kaggle. It's a site that is created for a lot of data related work, and there are a lot of data sets available for you to use. First, go to kaggle.com, then create a free account. Once you have a free account, sign in. On the left sidebar, click Datasets. In the middle of the page, you'll see a search bar to search for datasets. You can search for a topic you're interested in, such as movies or sales data or health, to see what datasets appear. Click on a dataset that looks interesting. A page is shown that explains a bit about the dataset and some of the files, tables and columns. To download the data, Click on the download button on the top right. You'll then be able to download the files. Depending on the data set you've chosen, this could be a single CSV file or a set of CSV files. Sometimes you'll get a data set that is in a different format. In my opinion, CSV files are the easiest to import into an SQL database. So if you want a database with CSV files, you can filter them on the results page earlier. Kaggle has thousands of data sets. They're usually clean, well-structured, and come with CSV files, which makes them really easy to import into SQL. You can find small and large data sets, which can help with all kinds of practice you want to do. Another helpful website is data.gov, a US government website that contains a lot of data sets. Just like Kaggle, you can browse a list of data sets or perform a search. Let's search for transport. We can see all of the matching results. There is one here called Electric Vehicle Population Data. I'll click on that, and I'll see a bit of information about the data and some buttons to download the data in a range of formats. I'll click the download button for the CSV format, and the file will get downloaded. There are also open data portals for many cities and governments. For example, the UK, the US, and Australia all have them. You can usually download data on things like population, health, or transport. So now we have our data set downloaded. Finding a data set is step one, but the real practice comes when you actually load it into your own database. This is where you get your hands dirty and start working like a real developer or data analyst. The steps to import a CSV file into a database will vary depending on which SQL editor you use and which database you use. I have some other videos on my channel for different editors, but I'll open an editor now and show you the steps. The overall process should be the same. You find the menu option, select a file, change some settings if needed, then import. We'll use an editor called Data Grip by JetBrains, and I've connected to a Postgres database on my computer. I'll right click on the Postgres entry here, then click Import Export, then Import Data from File. Next, I'll select one of the CSV files I just downloaded and click Open. Most SQL editors will show a screen like this. You'll see a preview of the data and the columns being imported. Now, generally you can leave the default settings, but you may want to change all of the data types to a text or varchar. The import will usually fail if data does not meet the requirements for a data type, so I found it easier to import data as text and then adjust it later. Once you've made any adjustments, click OK. The data will now be imported. This is the part most beginners find tricky. Don't stress about picking the perfect column types on the first try. Start simple and use text values, then refine later. The goal is to get the data in so you can practice queries. Now comes the fun part. Once your data is in SQL, you can start asking questions. This is where you build muscle memory and get better with your SQL. Think about some questions you'd like to answer about your data. You can start with a simple select star query on the table. We can see our sample car data in the table here. Now, looking at this data, we can start to think about the kind of questions we want to answer. 
Can we say what the most popular cars are? The cities that have the most electric cars. The oldest car. How many cars exist for each make? You can answer these kind of questions and more using SQL on a dataset like this. Don't stop with these. Think of your own questions. The more you explore, the more confident you'll become. If you'd like to practice your SQL skills, check out my SQL practice questions. You get a data set and a collection of 40 questions for you to solve by writing SQL on the data set. Check out the link in the description if you want to take your practice further. Here is what I recommend you do next. First, go to Kaggle or data.gov. Find a data set that looks interesting to you and download it. It's more enjoyable to work on a data set that you find interesting rather than boring. Then import the file into your local database. Then write at least three select queries to answer some questions you have about this data. You don't need to be perfect. The goal of this is to start building experience. Every query you write makes you faster and more confident. You now know where to find free datasets, how to load them into an SQL database, and how to write select queries to practice. The best way to get better at SQL is to practice with real data that interests you. Now that you've got real data to work with, let's make sure you're not practicing the wrong way. Watch this video next where I show you the biggest mistakes people make when practicing SQL and how to avoid them.